Listen, what you see on television from black folk and these so-called leaders, that doesn't represent a lot of us, okay? What you see here are people that think freely. Y'all exchange numbers with each other. Get to know one another, because I'm going to tell you, it's on us to do something. If a God didn't come for 400 years, what make you think he's going to come now? We've come a long way since 1660. What's 1660? That's when Charles II of England, okay, had uh, told the, the Council of Foreign Plantations to devise strategies for converting all enslaved Africans to Christianity. Now here we are, 350 years later, sticking it to King Charles, okay? One of the things about Christianity is, that really blows my mind, is there are no requirements to give anything back. You can steal, you can rob, you can kill, but you don't have to give it back. All you gotta do is repent, ask Jesus for forgiveness, but there's no requirement to say you gotta give it back. So all of those people who went into Africa, like Cecil Rhodes, the De Beers, the Oppenheimers, Livingston, and everybody else who raped Africa, their children, their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren are still reaping the benefits of it. Why? Because you don't... Some water, somebody bring me some water, please. Why? Because there's no requirement to give anything back. And that's where Christianity, that's where, that's one of the flaws that's in it, you know. People were asking me, well, who are you all? I mean, you're black, atheist, non-believer, thank you. Who are you? You know, I'm gonna, um, for all of you all for that are curious, I hope, you know, maybe you straddling the fence or don't quite know who we are. I hope I speak for the majority when I explain who, who we are exactly. You know, free thinkers like us, we can make a difference because we've decided to move on. But before I tell you who we are, you remember that movie, The Poseidon Adventure? You remember that? In the 70s, I know I'm dating myself, but you remember that movie, The Poseidon Adventure? The ship capsized, right? And so what were the majority of the people doing? What, what were they saying? They were saying, well, let's wait. Let's wait on help to get here. And there was a small group of people, which really kind of represents us a little bit. There was a small group of people saying, no, help is not coming. This ship has capsized, and if it's turned upside down, that means we got to go up to get out of here. They were the people that escaped. We're the ones here that realized our ship has capsized. That means we have to change our paradigm. And what is our paradigm? Our paradigm is the model, the pattern that forms the basis of what we believe. That's not working. Tomorrow is Sunday. Guess what's going to happen tomorrow? 20 to 25 million dollars are going to get sucked out the black community and go to these churches. How many people, you know, embrace physics and astronomy? Okay, then you know what a black hole is, right? A black hole is a, 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 a gap, or a, I can't explain it like a physics can, but it occurs when a supernova, a star, explodes. And it creates a hole with a gravitational pull that's so great that light can't even escape. That's what churches represent in our communities, black holes, okay? that the light from our mind is being sucked into it. You know, anything that gets close to a black hole will be sucked up. So you want to know why we're doing so poorly. Have you noticed that as more churches come in the black community, the worse off we get? 
the more of the mega churches, the worse things get. And you know why? Because they're black holes. They're sucking the light from our minds. You're going to church hearing the same thing you've been hearing since you was five years old. You know, so we, have, we are representing those who have decided to embrace the intellectual side of life, okay? White folks that are here, listen, we're not, we're not asking for equality. We can't, how are we going to be equal when, you, you know, we're 400 years behind to start with? And the second thing about equality, I've never understood that. We want equal rights. Listen, if I break in your home and I steal your gold and I steal your oil and I steal your diamonds and I steal your resources, how then do you expect me to turn it, turn around and share it amongst you e e equally? Does that make sense? I'm not going to take anything, steal from you. They enslaved, black people were enslaved. Let's put it like that. So they're not going to turn around and say, okay, I enslaved you for 400 years. Now here, let me divide these things amongst you equally. So we're not asking for that. We know the black folks that you see here in this event tonight, today, we know that it's on us to make a change. We know that. Okay, now we just finished the movie. My movie is done. Come on, give it up. The movie is for all of us. It's gonna represent us, I'm telling you. We did you proudly with this movie. Now we had a few select people that saw the movie. Raise your hand if you saw the movie last night. Okay, just a few folk. And we're gonna keep everybody informed. Of course, like I told you, the website is down. We got white folks in the movie. We got uh, Professor Lawrence Krauss. You familiar with Lawrence Krauss? One of the great astrophysicists, okay? He's in it. We ask a few black physicists to be in there. Guess what they say? Oh, no, I ain't good. When we went to Arizona to interview Lawrence Krauss, you know what Lawrence Krauss said? He said, I tell you what, I believe in what you're doing. I'm going to waive your appearance fee. He said, and all of the other black physicists that did, I'm not going to mention any names because we might need him down the road. But he said, shame on them for not participating in this movie. And I agree. But. One of the greatest things, one of the worst things I should say it's great in a negative sense that happened to black people was when they told us to lean on the Lord, put all your problems, put your trust in God, and he'll provide all of your needs. You know what that did? That took us out the game. Because this is a highly competitive game. You cannot pray your way into being competitive. The, the point you made about basketball, we're scoring points for the other team right now. And where is the incentive to be productive when you say God is going to do it for you? We might as well just go home and pray about it and allow God to work his magic. But we serve a God, or they serve a God that they ought to know by now doesn't intervene. We all prayed for a guilty verdict for Trayvon. He doesn't intervene. If there is a God, and I'm quoting somebody else, and I can't remember who it was, then us moral people, us intelligent people, we have an obligation to hunt his ass down and kill him. Because he's foul. Listen, if he has a personality, then he's foul. If he has a personality. Now you want to claim, you know, well, how did, how did all this get here? Well, now you're talking physics. Ask a physicist that. Don't ask a preacher that. Physics is the interconnection between matter and energy. Okay? Described by the laws of physics. So, you, you know, that's a question for the, for the physicists. But now if you're talking about, you know, life, I think some one of the speakers said there are some things 
that we never know, but I subscribe to creationism. It's a, I mean, to uh, evolution. It's a 150 year theory that has yet to be disproven. And if you really understand it, that you didn't come from a monkey, if you really take the time out to read about it and understand it before you judge it, you would know that, Steve Harvey. But, as you know, who are we? We are too humble to think that a God is specifically blessing us with personal favors. You see that field of grass out there? That's like one blade of grass out of trillions thinking that it's supposed to, that it's entitled to receive more sunlight and rain than the, than the blade of grass sitting right next to it. That's crazy. This is an exercise in insanity. Listen. intellectually embarrassed, okay, to subscribe to a God who tells us that women came from a man's rib. We just can't do that. We're too, we're, you know, we're too embarrassed. We're too busy on Sunday to keep going to some charlatans saying the same thing over and over again. We're too embracing of diversity to worship a God who chooses one particular group over another group. That ought to turn you off. It says right there, I am the God of Israel. Don't say nothing about Africa. It tells you in it, but you don't read it. We're too realistic to believe that a God could actually have a son, who, by the way, was him in the flesh temporarily. And we're too secure and confident in ourselves to worship a God who's jealous. I mean, all of these things, okay? We, but see, we can be taken seriously. All the major networks ought to be here. CNN, everybody, they all ought to be here. Now, if this was a church rally, they'd be here. If this was a big old church rally with T.D. Jakes, T.D. Jakes come to Atlanta, you had all the news people there. They ought to be here right now, you know. And why should they be here? First of all, this is a great opportunity for them to see, you know, black folk who are not, who are thinking differently, who are free from the grip of what we were placed in. Let me get back to my point. We had uh, Lawrence Krauss, we had other whites, we had Dan Barker, you might have seen him on Oprah, he's an ex-evangelical evangelical pre uh, preacher. We had David Ornstein here in New York who is an anthropologist. So we've got, we've got whites in it. Now let me tell you why. I'm going to get criticism from a lot of the black um, pan-Africanists, a lot of your die-hard blacks, but let me tell you, one of the reasons that we have white folk in there is because their ancestors perhaps played a role in putting you, you know, in mental bondage. Quite naturally, they hold some of the keys to open the doors. Knowledge is knowledge. At this point in time, we're too, we're too in dire straits. Our house is burning. We need to get knowledge from anybody we can get it from right now, because obviously what we're doing is not working, okay? Now, one of the things that kills me about a, a lot of your Pan-Africanists, and I don't have a problem with all of them, it's just some. They want to point out how everything comes from Africa. There's an over-glorification, and that's true. Africa is old. What doesn't come out of Africa? We know that. But the thing is, when you point out all of these gods and you want to criticize Christianity, which you should, but you say, you know what? We didn't have those gods in Africa. We worship this god, and we worship this god, and we had this god. None of those gods could save your butt from getting enslaved. None of them. None of them could slave you from getting subjugated, from getting colonized. You're still being colonized. You're still being tricked because 
You got people here from the Caribbeans. Raise your hand if you're from the, the Caribbeans. Okay. Listen. That was just another trick to say that you won your independence. Nigeria is not independent. Haiti is not independent. Jamaica is not independent. You cannot be independent when you don't even control the economy of your country. So you're still dependent. That's just a cute thing to make you think that you are. But you're not. We're not independent here. Oh, we, we, were, in, we were freed from the British. We got our independence from the British. Ghana, we got our independence from the French. No, you didn't. You don't control the economy of that nation. And partly because we're drunk. Africa is breaking number, they're breaking records converting into Christianity right now. I mean, Africa is going, every other country around the world is beginning to wake up but Africa. They got a saying in Africa that says, if you're black and you're on your way to church and you pass by a white man, turn around and go back home because you already seen God today. <laughs> they're messed up. And I know this hurts, but that's the truth. Listen, we're not sitting around waiting on a God to do something. We're not that stupid to think that putting our hands in this class position and praying is going to change our predicament. You got to be crazy as hell to think that. Like Dan Barker said, this position like this, look at this right here. Hold on, I'm going to put the mic down. And I'm quoting this from Dan Barker, who was in, who was in the, uh, the movie that we made. Look at this. What is this? This is a shackling of the wrist. Your head down. Head is down. You're bowed over. You're hunched over. Please, master, don't hurt me. Look at this position right here. You got your hands ready to be shackled. That's what religion does. Now, one of the things that the Bible does, one of the biggest goofs, it kind of separated us from, from, from animals. Now, separates us from animals when you read Genesis. He created all them creepy animals that walk on all fours and then he created man. There are bonobos that are smarter than many believers. But I'm going to tell you, he goofed, the Bible goofed when it did that. We're animals, we're a human animal, but we're mammals, we're primates. We share a lot of the, the, the DNA, okay? So what do, what do all animals recognize? What is the goal of all animals? That's to eat and not be eaten, okay? Let's look at racism, for example. Do you think you cannot legislate how people feel about you? You can't make somebody love you or like you? If you want your place, you gotta carve it yourself, and it comes with this. Go invent something. I'm not saying that racism doesn't exist, but let me tell you what racism actually is, okay? Racism is a cute word for one group doing whatever it takes to stay on top of the food chain. You might not like genocide. You might not like gentrification, which is going on all over the country. You might not like ethnic cleansing. You might not like genocide. You might not like all of that stuff. But guess what? Because you don't like it doesn't mean it's going to stop. Racism is one group doing whatever it takes to stay on top of the food chain. We are the segment of African Americans that, take, that are taking, up, taking advantage of the information age. The train has left the Bronze Age, okay? I wish these people, these Christians, the T.D. Jakes, the Creflo Dollars, 
who continue to tell our people lies and put us back further and further and further. That's why I was saying this ought to be telecast everywhere. When I was young, oh, I was that white man, that damn white man. I mean, damn, after a while you realize you are, you, you, we would be lying, it would be disingenuous to say that we're not the main ones shooting our damn self in the feet. You see white folk that are here today? They're here because they're interested. They're happy to see some black people that are free in their thought. We share a commonality today. So beating them up ain't gonna do any good. That's over with. That's an old dog, an old toothless dog that ain't gonna hunt no more. This is a jungle. And there's no set of divine rules or 10 incomplete commandments that's going to make this thing better. This is a concrete jungle. There's nothing that goes on on Wall Street or in the meetings of corporate America or in the meetings of big banks that doesn't go on on the Serengeti. It's just in a different form. All of us here are trying not to get eaten. We're trying not to get eaten by the IRS, by our jobs, by the mortgage industries, by anyone who's trying to eat us. That's still your goal at the end of the day, not to get eaten. It's a jungle. It's all fair. Like it or not, it's fair. You have to think your way out of this, though. Now, we're the ones that are on the bottom of the food chain, okay? Concepts like morals and righteousness and altruism, those are philosophical words that prey uses in an attempt to appeal to the conscience of his predator. No disrespect, but that's what Martin Luther King did, tried to appeal to the conscience of his predator. Let me tell you something. If a lion, if a pride of lion, if they go and they find a herd of, of, of animals, you know, an oasis of animals, some wildebeest, some gazelles, some buffalo, and they discover that, do you think they're going to turn around and tell their competition that they just discovered that over there? They're going to keep it from you. Right now, we're on the bottom of the food chain. If it's a, a piece of meat, we're not going to eat first. <laughs> We're gonna get the scraps. Now we've been long, we've been here long enough to get some choice parts of that meat. But we can't do it because we're too damn drunk with religion. When you're drunk, you're what's the first thing that happens when the police pull you over? Okay? When you getting caught, how many people have been caught drinking and driving? It's all good. Listen, when the police pulls you over, okay? and they take you and they put you in jail, what do they do? They release you on what? Your own recognizance. So now you are, you're, you're sobered up. You're cognizant enough to know that, yeah, I did it, I was speeding. Okay, it won't happen again, I'm gonna go to court. But they won't release you unless you're cognizant enough to know what you did. That's the same thing with religion. We're drunk. And we're, we can't think straight. And this is why, listen, it's not that black people are incapable of rising from the ashes that we, the, the helpless praying gazelles that we, help, that we find ourselves in. It's the fact that we're not using the faculties of our brains enough. That's what it is. We're smart as hell, we're talented as hell, but we can't get out of the way of religion. Let me tell you, as long as you keep a God in your pocket, that Bible in the back seat of your car, and you keep a God in your pocket, you keep the possibility of intervention alive. It's always that possibility that he gonna do something. I know, oh I know God gonna do something with this Trayvon case, I know that. He fooled your ass again. But us as non-believers and atheists and secularists and humanists, we have to be able to convey 
to the non-believer more effectively. We got to read more as atheists. Just because you say you don't believe in God, that don't mean you can convey that effectively to someone who's asking you about it. You got to be, you know, prepared for these crazy questions that you're going to get asked. When someone asks me, wait a minute, Jeremiah, do you believe in God? Let me let the devil go back for a minute. Hold on. Jeremiah, do you believe in God? When they ask you that question, this is a question that's where it's proper to answer it with another question. Because they tell us in school, don't ask a, answer a question with a question. No, this is the time to do it. So when they say, do you believe in God? The first thing you can ask them is, first of all, why should I? Where is the entitlement package that I'm going to receive? Now you look at God as like all state, your protection, your insurance policy. But at least all state give you an entitlement package, tell you what you're going to receive. Where can you go as a believer that I can't? What can you achieve as a believer that I can't? You know, what can you do as a believer that I can't as a non-believer? That's the question. Where is the entitlement package? Hell, if all that was good, why do you find yourself in the mess that you're in right now? We gotta find another alternative thought process. It's time to think differently. This is a magnificent piece of hardware right here. And we're not using it because they told us to put it in the hands of the Lord. I'm, the, I'm down there in, in Atlanta. I'm in the Bible Belt. It's rough down there. It's rough in Dallas. Who's from Dallas? Yeah. It's rough. You got just as many mega church preachers as we have down there. So it's rough. But that's okay because people that are here, we are creative enough. Did anybody read the book, uh, The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell? You read that book. Okay, so you know what he's talking about in that book. Little things can ignite. That's why he has a match on the cover of it. Just something very small can ignite something. This little small group has the power to create an inferno. Okay? You got brothers like talented brothers, Victor Harris. I mean, you know, if I had a website up, my brother, it would go up. But they hacked it last night. But I'm going to get it back up. But don't be discouraged. Mandisa, where are you? Listen, from the top and bottom of my heart and my head, I want to thank you, okay? Because you had the foresight to know and the instincts and the intuition to know that this is what we needed. So everybody here is a testament to the success. It doesn't matter the numbers because something small can, you know, turn into something huge. We just have to have the ability to articulate it effectively to the crazy folks that's out here. That's all. Just know how to convey the message. Oh, I don't believe in God. That, it got to be more than that. We got to have some information to give them. Now, a lot of people will listen to this and they'll say, well, damn, this brother's selling us out. He gonna act like racism don't exist and we got a million black men in prison. Oh, hell, I know racism exists. All you gotta do is read um, what's the, Michelle Alexander's book, The New Jim Crow. We'll get in prison twice as long for the same offense. We know that. But you got to understand that racism is a frame of reference issue. It's a frame. What do I mean by that? 
it only exists in the eyes of the victim. See, to the perpetrator, it's business as usual. It's staying on top of the food chain. That's what it is to them. You cannot get mad at a lion who want to eat first. If we, you know, listen, us being enslaved, our ancestors, that was not a mis that was not in vain. If you think that though that the establishment is supposed to turn around and help you out the benevolence of their heart and sh divide things amongst you equally, then slavery was in vain. They didn't go through all of that, selling us off and doing all that to turn around and give you anything. That's wishful thinking. 